Not long ago, Creality released the Ender 3 S1, and it was a pretty dang good printer. But they've already released a new version of that, the Ender 3 S1 Pro. What makes it a pro machine, and is it worth the money? We're gonna find out today. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Per Gear was awesome enough to send the Ender 3 S1 Pro over for me to check out. And I've been playing with it ever since we did the live unboxing that you can find right here. But is this printer really worth the extra money? The Pro version comes with an upgraded 4.3 inch touchscreen. The interface is good and it's very responsive to use. It also has a PEI spring steel sheet. It worked very well in testing and prints stuck to it. And when it cooled down, they popped right off. The LED light bar sits right here in the front of the printer and it turns off and on with this switch right on the side. It's bright and it does its job of lighting up the build area, but there's something I just don't like about this light and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna jump in here real quick and say if you're getting value out of today's video, please smash that like button. It helps shoot this video out through the algorithm and YouTube and get it in front of more people in our community who might love to see this video. It really helps me and the channel out and I can't thank you enough for doing that. Now back to it. Last but not least, the Pro version features the new Sprite hot end, but this one is all metal. It's not PTFE lined like the Ender 3 S1 and Creality says that it works up to 300 degrees Celsius. So that is four, yes, I said four, four new upgrades that makes the Ender 3 S1 Pro a Pro model. Those are all on top of the features that you already get with the Ender 3 S1. And if you haven't seen those features yet, check out this video right here where I go over everything about the Ender 3 S1 base model. Like I said, I'm really liking this printer and it's printed great for me so far. The first print that came off the printer was this bunny that we printed during the live stream. It was printed in the Emerald City Green Poly Alchemy Elixir, and it turned out really nice. Another print I did was the inversion based from Clockspring 3D. Also in the Poly Alchemy Emerald City Elixir, it turned out awesome, and this thing really shines. The layers were clean, and there are no gaps in this base at all. Next, I thought I would choose a model that would take a nice long time to print. So I printed the Rift Bowl by Clockspring 3D. After a total of about 50 hours between the bowl itself and the lid, it turned out phenomenal. It's printed in filament matte black filament, and I just love how this bowl looks. There was a few very minor wisps of stringing inside, but nothing crazy, and they all just kind of blew right out when I blew on them. I didn't even have to pull. Overall, this bowl came out gorgeous, and I just love the matte black finish. Overall, the prints came out great, as you can see here, but there was one that didn't, the clock spring torture toaster. Uh, a couple hours in, the extruder jammed, causing this thing to stop printing and just print in midair, and obviously the print failed. I'm not sure why this happened, but I did just get the extruder unjammed, so stay tuned to social media where I'll post a picture and maybe even a video of the functional torture toaster as soon as it's done printing. I can say it was actually a little more of a chore to unjam this extruder versus say the typical Creality hot end. But that's the deal with direct drive extruders. A lot of times it takes a little more time to actually take it apart and get that jam free because everything's put together right here. It's not two separate pieces where there's an extruder over here and just the hot end here. So you have to take it kind of all apart to get there. In the end, it worked out just fine. It is unjammed and I filmed a video and I will post that soon on how to take this thing apart and unjam it. I tell you what, it was a lot more process than I thought it was gonna be, so stay tuned for that video. Now I mentioned earlier that there was something about this LED light that I just didn't care for. And that's the fact that it literally only turns off and on. It's not RGB, it's not controlled by the board, it just doesn't do anything. It just turns off and on like a regular old light. Now that's cool if you wanna see the hot end, but I would prefer it to be plugged into the board. You could do really cool things with this light. You could set it so it goes red when it's all heated up and ready to go, or blue when it's all cooled down, or green when the print finishes. All those things could have been achieved, but unfortunately, it's just a plug-in light. It just turns off and on. I really think Creality kind of dropped the ball on this. It could have been much more awesome than it is, but hey, it's still a light, I guess. Overall, I think the S1 Pro is a very good value for what you get. Pretty much 
every feature you could ask for straight out of the box. But the elephant in the room is the $499 price. At $70 more than the standard S1, it makes it the most expensive Ender 3 that Creality has ever produced. That sounds crazy, but for the price, you get a 220 by 220 by 270 build area, the CR Touch auto bed leveling system, the PEI spring steel sheet, filament runout sensors, belt tensioners, the LED light, the all metal hot end, the 32 bit silent board that comes in this thing, um, and a 4.3 inch touchscreen. Not to mention, this actually comes with dual Z rods in the back, just like the Ender 3 S1 did, and it's belt synced up top. So this thing pretty much has it all. To show the math, the four upgrades, if they are purchased separately, would cost about $200. The Pro is only $70 more than the Ender 3 S1. That's a savings of $130 if you just buy the Ender 3 S1 Pro over the standard Ender 3 S1 version. In my opinion, the Ender 3 S1 Pro is definitely worth the money, especially if you're looking for a printer that has almost all the features you could ever want right out of the box and prints very good, even on stock profiles like this one. If the build area suits you and the budget is okay, this printer comes in at $499, so if it's in your budget, I highly suggest the Ender 3 S1 Pro. There are gonna be some people out there who say I could buy an Ender 3 Pro and put all of this stuff on here for cheaper than $499, but that's not the audience that Creality is going for on this. They're going for a set it and forget it option. You set it up, you're ready to print, you're ready to go. This printer is not for you if you want to do all those upgrades yourself. It's just not worth the money to you because you wanna do it. So don't buy it if it's a printer that you wanna do a bunch of upgrades to because they're pretty much all done for you. If you wanna go that route, I totally support that. I love upgrading my printers too. But if you're the person that just wants everything right out of the box, that's who this printer's for. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Ender 3 S1 Pro. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Also, if you're looking for a printer just like this, but maybe your budget's a little less or you don't need all these fancy features, check out this video where we look at the Ender 3 S1. Spoiler alert, it's a really good value as well. And if you're looking for this printer, but you don't need those four extra upgrades, check out this video right here where we take a look at the Ender 3 S1. Hint, it's still a really good value.